I've been saying some difficult things for some months, for some weeks. Let me add this one. I said before that marriage committee is an institution, a creation peculiar to deeper life. It's not in the Bible. We, we, we risk it up just to help our young people. If we find that that marriage committee is not helping us anymore, is hindering us, and is hindering the young people from doing the will of God, and the young people fear marriage committee more than they fear God, will knock off marriage committee. Because marriage committee is our own making. It's not in the Bible. It's for administration. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me add. Women ministry is our own making. It's not in the Acts of the Apostles. Anybody that wants to sew a piece of clothes like Dockers to other people, she can do that without a women ministry. Anybody that wants to learn how to make soap, how to cook, how to do this, you can go to your nearby restaurant or somewhere and learn that. We don't have to have marriage committee do that. If you want to make, a, you know, how to dye clothes and all that, we don't, need money. we don't need a women ministry in deeper life to dye clothes. You can lo go and learn that in the suburb, in the localities there. If we find out that the women ministry is, uh, you know, taking us into the world, and we are interchanging and helping each other to know how to live like the world and dress like the world and marry like the world and deal with your husband like the world. And we're taking the church back to the world. Marriage, the ministry of women is our own. Thank you very much. There is the ministry of women is our own making. If it's not helping us, if it's going to hinder us, we'll strike it off. Take my word. Take my word. Before I leave, before I leave, I mean before I go, I'm going to remove everything that I set up, that I thought will help deeper life and make us holy, make us sanctified, make us deep, make us deeper. And I see it's not making us deeper and shallow. Before I leave, I'll uproot all of them and present to you a pure church before I leave. That's why I'm telling you, if you want to, if you want to stay in the church and you want to leave like the word of God is teaching us, you will be, what am I afraid of? I'm, I'm not afraid of anything. I can only be afraid of the judgment of God. Therefore, whoever responds, praise the Lord. Whoever reacts, praise the Lord. We are going to stand on the word of God. This doctrine of the word, be not conformed unto this world. We're going to stand on it until Christ comes. And by the grace of God, I'm not going yet. I said I'm not going yet. But before I go, and I'm telling you, and all our leaders can hear. Well, I'm not going to hand over, you know, deeper life to somebody who will come and destroy everything we built up for years. Because it's a man pleaser. Women pleaser. Never. Somebody who will stand on this word and honestly defend the faith once delivered unto the saints. That's what we are going to do. And the whole church will unite together and say, we're not looking for graduates. We're not looking for, you know, degrees. Whoever, Peter did not have a degree. Whoever will stand on this word and lead us to salvation. New creature that changes life. Whoever will maintain that sanctification. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Whoever will have backbone and stand, and stand faithful, and be willing to deny himself, sacrifice everything, and bring the church to obedience to the word of God. That's the kind of leader God will raise up for deeper life after I'm gone.
And you, by the grace of God, make yourself available and stand on the word. Don't make yourself a problem to the church. Don't make yourself a person that we are pulling forward and then you are dragging us back. You'll not be like that in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Already we have heard a lot today. You want to tell the Lord, oh Lord, I